me three mil. Why don't you come and follow me and Craig around the mill and we'll show you some of the things that are here and some of the things that went on. A little bit about the history of the place and a little bit about the history of the Wii U. On the outskirts of Burnley, a town once dominated by the textile industry, lies Hall Syke, the home of Queen Street Mill, the last surviving operational steam powered weaving mill in the world. Owned by the Queen Street Manufacturing Company, the mill is a time capsule of the late Victorian age, which produced cloth using Victorian steam driven powered looms until its closure in 1982. Discover the story of cotton cloth production where you're interested in local or social history, textiles and textile machinery or just looking for an afternoon out with a difference. The sights, the sounds and smells of Queen Street Mill bring the textile industry vividly to life. Like most mills in Burnley, Queen Street Mill specialised in producing plain cotton calico, known as grey cloth. The architecture of the mill was designed to allow this process to be carried out as efficiently as possible. The old land of long, long ago. The side of the building that faces onto Queen Street was originally a four-storey building which was rebuilt as the present single story structure following extensive damage caused by a fire in 1918. The weaving shed itself is a traditional single story building with flagged stone floor. This was more practical on account of the weight and motion of the looms. The building was extended in the early 20th century to double the size of the weaving shed. Cast iron columns support the gutters of the traditional north light roofing, providing large, unobstructed floor spaces. North lights allowed the maximum amount of natural light into the building, whilst avoiding direct sunlight, therefore helping to keep the temperature down even on the hottest summer's day. Hall site became one of the most important weaving villages in Victorian Lancashire and is now a conservation area displaying industrial architect which has been little changed in the last 100 years. In the grounds of the mill is the chimney which stands 120 feet high and the mill pond or lodge which is fed by rainwater collected in the gutters and piped through the downspouts from the mill roof. To the side of the lodge is a small stable building made of brick and stone which would have housed the mill's four horses until motorised transport was purchased in 1926. It is unusual for stable blocks to be found intact as they were often de demolished or converted into garages. Queen Street Mill is unique, as it, that's as it survives today, with a lot of the original machinery. It's unlikely that the Queen Street Mill Company could actually afford to update the machinery and buy new ones. Especially during the later years, when much of the textile business went abroad. Although some alterations have been made to the interior of the building to allow it to function as a museum, the mill remains largely unchanged. Visitors to the boiler house engine, house and weaving shed can see these areas presented much as they would have been a hundred years ago, though a good deal cleaner. The weaving shed is now a third of its original size, though what remains is authentic with fully working line shafts connected by traditional leather belts to 308 Victorian Lancashire looms. The financial structure of the company inhibited change 
and the original equipment was not improved again or replaced but the company continued to weave when other firms had closed. Mains Electricity was only introduced in 1947. The whole SAG strike of 1915. Are the work of the weavers. could earn 24 shillings a week. This was just below at what a tackler could earn. But it was also less than the average in the area. And the manager said this was due to having to transport to Burnley. In August 1915, there was a strike that lasted for several weeks, triggered by this injustice. Many workers were also shareholders and took a dividend from the profits of the mill. So they refused to join the strike. Leaflets were printed by the Weavers Union accusing them of scabbing and being knobsticks. This issue was resolved in December 1915 when the war bonus came into effect and Weavers were persuaded to see this as the rise they had been seeking. Cotton control was introduced in 1918, which led to a four-day working week. A serious fire occurred in October 1918. The fire didn't affect the boilers or the engine, and the mill was fully operational again ten days after the incident. However, the mill front was damaged, and was subsequently rebuilt, though as a single storey building. During the rebuilding, the mill looms were relocated to the bottom shed. The Queen Street Mill Company was established in 1894 and comprised of local people men and women from Briarfield. The first board of directors was listed as Thomas Pickles, the foreman, John Nuttall, glazer, George Lane, a builder, William Kippax, a weaver, Whittaker Whittaker, a weaver, Briley Edmondson, weaver, John Taylor, weaver, and James Corrin, headmaster of Harrogate School who became the first company secretary. Brightcliff was a tight-knit community and many of the directors of Queen Street Mill were also members of the Brightcliff Brass Band. To mark the opening of the mill in 1895, Reverend Harrison and Edmund Atkinson, a tackler and member of the Brass Band, climbed to the top of the chimney with the latter played cornet solo. The 20,000 pounds which it cost to build the mill was raised by selling 4,000 five pound shares. Many of those who became mill workers were shareholders and passed the shares down through the generations of their family. When the mill closed in 1982, many of those who worked there were related to the original mill workers. Nobody heeding and no one to carry her out. And this poverty, poverty knocks. Millunit is saying all day. Poverty, poverty knocks. Gaffers to skinny to pay.